Ahí va. Khí phá hải cộng gà Không tệ gì à Chỉ mua tay phá Building. Bắt đầu nhập. I don't have it. Do you think you have to go? Do you think you have to go? Do you think Did we miss the guided tour? Uh, so uh, the tour starts, I had a tour that started at 2. This is the first set of rooms you're going to see. That's technically a servant space. This is the kitchen area. The kitchen is made up of several different rooms. This is the first one. It's called the butler's pantry. They never had any butlers here, only maids. Uh, servants bells at the top here. This is an, uh, a room called the scullery. It is a fancy word for dishwashing room. There's not really much in there. Um, but the main kitchen does have some unique stuff. So let's all come out here and spread out. Are those perishable canned goods? Uh, <laughs> they are cans. There's nothing in them. But, uh, <laughs> um, the, that's a good question. So, I mentioned earlier that we had a lot of original like documents and things. This is one of them. This is actually uh, a, a grocery receipt from 1934. It's a copy of it. And with this receipt, we were able to piece back together what the pantry looked like. So these are foods they were eating in the 30s more so. You have, um, these are replica containers sent to us by the company themselves. These are all original. They're brand new still today. Kraft, Del Monte, Mazzola, Maxwell House, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Potato, chips. Potato chips. So <laughs> chips are a new thing for the 30s uh, in your home anyway. If you wanted chips beforehand, you had to go to a restaurant and you had to uh, purchase them there. So this is a new thing for Canadians. Same with pineapple. Pineapple is actually a, a you couldn't get pineapple until it was tinned and, and Ray was brought over from hotter places uh, this. So that's why in 20s, 30s recipes you'll see a lot of pineapple in a lot of recipes. Here's some pictures of some of the servants that were living and working here. Um, Charles Woodger, the chauffeur, the you know, cook and a maid, uh, the gardener friend Small, uh, the uh, chauffeur's brother, and their children. But this is a special person. This is Mrs. Pipkin. Mrs. Pipkin is actually an escaped slave uh, from the South. She comes to Toronto to become a laundry woman. These are the original stoves to the house. This is the one from the 1800s, cast iron. It uses wood and it's not great for cooking on because um, you have to control the wood to feed it constantly. So they eventually just be baked into a countertop. And then this becomes the most modern appliance they had at the, in the 30s. It is the Miss Canada Stove by Moffat Appliances. It's super deluxe and uh, they, it actually does still work, which is amazing. You can still cook on it. Normally ice boxes are quite small. They're only about yay big, super tiny. This is a huge one. It's about 10 times bigger than the average ice box. The front is just produce. 
packaged goods and whatnot. The back acts as a meat locker. The top is where you put the ice in. You load it from the outside. There's a door that you can swing it in via a pulley. Uh, and the floor has a root cellar, so for potatoes and carrots and whatnot. They would harvest the ice in the frozen winter lakes. Uh, this is not too far from here. It's Lake Simcoe. And then they would store them in concrete blocks, or uh, concrete buildings like this, uh, filled with sawdust and straw to keep everything nice and cold. Um, and in the summertime, when it was hot enough, they would sell them. This is them transporting the ice from the lake to one of the warehouses, but they would have delivered them in similar trucks like this. You need about 100 kilograms of ice every week when it gets really hot like this to keep everything cold. And they actually used this ice box till the 40s, believe it or not. And they did have refrigerators at that point, but I would assume that this is much bigger than any refrigerator you can get commercially at that time. So um, they just used it for a very long time. But in those warehouses, it's cold enough that it doesn't melt. Coffee is really good at keeping stuff cold in the same with straw sawdust by insulating it. And it keeps itself cold, basically. So this is the billiards room. You can imagine it's all that because it's a very large billiards table here. It's custom made. Around the table is a cork floor that is installed um, because uh, uh, shoes at that time didn't have uh, rubber like ours do today. Uh, they're mostly wood and leather, so you actually could slip and trip on a floor like this if you didn't have cork on it like this. Around the room, you'll see this beautiful Art Nouveau frieze. It's none of the apple orchards that are outside this window. How you do this type of artwork is you'd actually put wet plaster in a piping bag, you pipe on the design, the similar way you decorate a cake, and then you paint with oil paints. These are all the original colors from the 30s. Um, uh, on the far end, there is a custom-made chair for Albert. It's called an invalid chair. That chair is um, mostly used by people who can't really walk as much, and Albert, when he was older, could not walk. So they made this chair for him, and this basically became his bedroom. He lived here, he worked here, did everything in this chair in this room. In the very middle, you have a, um, a uh, special trophies from the 1904 Summer Olympics, and uh, that is really neat because Albert was finished uh, around 1924, but they had to move out very quickly after because he couldn't afford to keep it anymore. Right. This house was first built in 1866, I'll do much of it. Um, it's added on in 19, 1898, and then the third floor is built in 1912. So by the time the house was finished, they were starting to build houses. So the last room we saw is a guest room. This is a family room. How can we tell this is a family room? Well, um, there's no crown molding at the top. The furniture is more comfortable. And there's lots of family pictures in this room as well. Look at this one. Here This is the library, officially. The only books that are here, though, belong to Albert. Um, every family member kept their own books in their own spaces and places. So he kept his here by the writing desk. But the most important thing in this room, in my opinion, is actually the radio. There is a 1927 Crosley radio here. They bought that in 1927 for $500, which if you do the translation uh, for inflation, is equal to about $7,000 today. So we spent a lot of money on a radio, but it's a custom-made radio. It is a huge radio. They wanted it to fit the decor of the room. A lot of Canadians did have radios at that time, but they were much smaller. And eventually, they were also made out of plastic, so you can get them more cheaply available. Uh, the small room is the telephone room. There are two phones there. I'm curious what you think the two phones are used for. And we are going to take a peek in the telephone room. Feel free to step on in and take a look. Oh, here we go. So this is the dining room. This is where they eat all their everyday meals. 
Um, if they had a big party, they would either have a garden party outside or they would uh, set out a buffet on the dining, on the bill a billiard table, and then that would be an indoor buffet, which they rarely did. Um, around you have the portraits of important people from the family, Jane and Susan Austin. Um, we have Mary Austin, who is in her wedding dress, and uh, she's placed here at the... On the right is Bernie Austin, he was the youngest son of the family. He died at the age of 24 from tuberculosis, which is a lung disease. It's so hard for the family to lose one of their favorite children that they paint a full oil painting of him. He actually was traveling to Egypt because at the time there was no cure for tuberculosis, just treatment. The only treatment they had was fresh air and dry conditions. Um, and sunlight, so they thought, okay, going to Cairo might be the best thing to do, but he caught pneumonia on the way. So he actually died of many things, but mostly that. This door behind the curtain, it swings out to the kitchen, so this is next to the um, butler's pantry, and this is where the servants would come in and out from um, to serve the family. How they were called in was via this button. This is a button that's installed in the 30s, uh, at the table, this button is most likely electric, you can see the wires in it, and that means that this was installed most likely after Albert passes away, so after 1934, um, they would come in and out as for her request. Anyone have a guess what the small table is for? Children? Yeah, good guess, the children's table. Um, the kids would be sitting there until about 12, 13 years old, and then they would get to move up to the adults' table, but if they didn't have good manners, they would have to go back to the children's table. And it was a way of showing off uh, how you had to, you know, be have etiquette uh, at that time. I didn't mention there are two phones in the telephone room. Uh, does anyone want to guess why there are two phones in the telephone room? To call people? Well, who would they call? Uh, the big phone is the line out, and it just calls anyone and everyone, but they most likely have to go through the operators to call. So you call the operator, they would patch you through. The smaller phone, it goes to the chauffeur's apartment. So when they wanted a ride, they would call him directly and he would pull up the car to the front. So the front hall is made up of a few different rooms. Uh, there's two here. The first on the left is, is, is the front entrance. Uh, this is where you'd be entering if you were a guest. So the guests enter through here. Um, they'd be greeted by a maid, but you'd also be greeted by the two wolves here. Um, I mentioned earlier that, um, I may have mentioned earlier, that there's a lot of taxidermy in this house. Uh, it's very popular to decorate with taxidermy because um, if, you, if you also if you appreciated nature like Albert did, that was a big part of your decorating motif. But you can actually also order taxidermy through catalogs, so we don't know where these wolves actually come from. There's no records of them. And the next room is over here. It's called the receiving room. It's, in my opinion, the most fancy room in the house. It is red silk wallpaper. It's padded. There's a lot of uh, pieces from their travels in there. Uh, Mary had her receiving day, which is a day the lady of the house was allowed to invite friends, family, and charity to meet with her. And if you're going to the party, this is the first room you would see um, coming to the house. Feel free to take a look uh, close up at the wolves if you would like, uh, uh, check out the receiving room, and then when we're all done, we'll head back to the middle apartment, and then I will tell you a little bit more about the front hall, and then we'll check the next room. So you may wonder, you may have wondered, how do we um, put the house back to where it was? But uh, as you can imagine, when we got the house in the 80s, it didn't look like this. And I didn't mention photographs. This is actually a photograph from a 1915 magazine. It's called Saturday Night. And this magazine uh, showcased this home in 1915 um, and by taking photos of the various rooms. This is up here on the right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the original uh, piano from the uh, 1800s, mid-1800s. It was a gift to Mary from her uh, in-laws, James and Susan. Um, and uh, it is a Steinway piano, it's beautiful. She loves music, and that's what a big purpose of this room is. It's a big, it's, it, it serves many purposes. It's called the drawing room. They don't actually draw in here, but you get the, from the word withdraw. You withdraw from dinner, you'd come here, and you'd be here for parties. So. 
all the big furniture pieces have wheels on them. They're Victorian pieces as well. Um, they get wheeled away, and this becomes a dance floor. So the dance floor would be here. You can also set up for concerts, lectures, whatever you'd like in this room. This is an add on by Albert. As I mentioned earlier, you love nature, gardening. That's this room here. Um, there's two things I'll point out in this room. In the middle, uh, there's a lighting fixture. That is an original Tiffany's light. Um, so if you're curious as to uh, what that looks like, there's one here. There's also a gardener who lives and works uh, on the property. Uh, we saw his picture earlier. He was not allowed to walk through the house because he had muddy shoes and also servants weren't really meant to be seen. They're meant to work and just, that's really it. So, and he didn't come through any of these doors because they're locked from the inside. So the way he came into this room was actually that trap door on the floor on the right side there. That goes to the basement. That, um, there used to be a ladder down there. He would come up, he would do his work, and then go back down. So it shows you a bit of class divide in this house. You also notice that on the, the um, frame here, there's also a servant's bell on this side. Um, so that's how they would call servants for other servant purposes. Feel free to take a look uh, at anything, take some photos. And then some of the furniture is in the, the wrong place now because we uh, had to move everything for a film shoot that we did a few weeks ago. And it's having to put back in. Leave them alone. Um, there are two rooms that are restored, though. This is the first one. It is called the Blue Room. Um, it is a sitting room, a tea room, but also a private art gallery for Mary. She likes to showcase women artists and Canadian artists and art in here at all, to the point even where women weren't allowed to sign their work. But Mary wanted to actively purchase their pieces, as well as Canadian pieces too. So she got to do that in this room here. And she also invited her favorite friends and family to have tea with her in this room specifically. There is um, the master bedroom we're gonna check out. Now, Albert and Mary do share a room together, but at one point she decides to, Albert decides to go up to the third floor to have his own room. And then later on, he actually um, lives in the billiards room at his, at his chair. So this becomes just Mary's room. There's, there's a room we're gonna walk through. It is called uh, the Cozy Corner, which is nicknamed by her grandchildren. It is um, a accidental room when they added the extended second floor. Uh, this is a reading corner. So we're gonna pass by her books and uh, come on. And those are replica dresses, but they're of patterns of the time. So these are very popular fashions. Um, so as you can see, Mary is a big uh, fan of the color green. There's lots of green in this room. And uh, she also has a few things that she you know, enjoys. This is a custom-made bed frame. It looks like it's small. It's not that small. It's a double size, big headboard. So it gives the illusion of a small bed. Um, we also have her full length mirror here. So she would get ready. She'd do her makeup and whatnot here. She'd get ready and check out um, her dress in that mirror specifically. Um, and then we also have uh, the ensuite bathroom. I'm going to tell you about it in here. Feel free to go take a look in a second. Um, there is a small tub called a sits bath. That's a medical tool, basically. You would sit in the tub and fill your stomach uh, over with hot, cold water. And it was supposed to help with different ailments and illnesses. It didn't really do that, but that's what they thought it did. The tub next to it is a, a, a cloth foot tub, so the uh, claws are painted with gold nails. Under the sink, you'll see some foot warmers. You fill those with hot, boiling water. You put them in your bed. They keep your feet nice and warm. And on the wall, there is a gas burner for Albert to warm up his shaving cream and hot water so we can shave quickly. Um, 
Um, so they added on some stuff. So this this wall was added on uh, in like the 18 late 1800s because um, this little hallway wouldn't have existed. So that mini tub in there is for babies, I guess. No, that's the sits bath. So that's their that's the medical tub. So the idea is that you sit in it and you turn on the tap, it fills your stomach over your stomach with hot cold water. You add like herbs and stuff to it, but they thought it would cure all these different illnesses. They thought it would cure like the cold, but all the way down to like kidney failure, like serious illnesses. They thought, oh, this will help. Um, so Mary had diabetes, and we believe that she was told by her doctor to use that tub as a part of her diabetic treatment. So specifically to around here. Yeah, so if you, if, I mean, you, you can't sit in it obviously now, but if you did sit in it, uh, the water would only cover this part of your body. Um, and that would be all that would have to concentrate on to, to have its medical treatment take effect. And they couldn't use that with the big tub? I, that's what I think too, but <laughs> I guess like they just wanted to concentrate it to that area of your body. There is a type of water canister that, that you make like seltzer water with, but they were putting like radioactive material in that water because they believe if you drink radioactive water, it's going to help your overall health benefits. And this was a very popular thing at that time. So you think of certain things like, hmm, synth baths are actually still used to this day for a lot of medical things, but not for that extreme of medical things. Just to help with like certain pains and, ail and ailments. You're sick. Yeah, this is mostly based on what they knew of or believed of medical treatments at the time. Yes, yes. Like even the something as simple as the potato chip tin. The potato chip tin um, is um, they thought chips were healthy, right? That they would help with your with your overall active lifestyle. And I'm assuming that's because of the salt that they were adding to it. Because the wallpaper itself is not original. This is a copy. Um, but how we made these copies is we um, found little pieces of it and we also had samples of it in the attic or in the top part um, and we remade them so so if you haven't noticed already yes there's the bathroom there that's the only bathroom on the first floor so the guest entrance is one with the walls the servant's entrance is the one that we all use today this is the, the family entrance so naturally this is the family set of stairs too so this is the set of stairs that they were using um, frequently versus the other one. Yeah. Starting in August, we are, if you're in town, we are having an art exhibit called Dismantle where we're going to relook at the house through the eyes of Mrs. Pipkin, who was the escaped slave servant, and imagine what it would look like if she was the wealthy owner of this house. Oh, let's go to the other side. You can go to the other side. This is like a horror movie. Do you have any feelings? This is really the same. This is not the same. It's the same. Hey, you have something else? Okay, what's going I don't know if I'm going to
天班人都話：，我呢個喺個公園度。Every possible flag. You got so many, man. Sorry. I'm getting there. Ini ini kerja. Kerja lah. Wah. 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 Hai sen, mama hai sen. Ini dah ingat sekarang, ada apa yang kau tahu tak? Eh, macam ni. 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 Oh, hi. 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 啊，揾個角度先，影個相。呢度唔知邊個屋。貓喺度先影到啲。我喺度影啊。點解啲樹咁樣㗎？貓低㗎啦。今晚先至同你嘅，我哋講內勢。你今晚翻？今晚唔翻，今晚先至打電話講內勢。今日都等我哋玩下先。哦，呢度好暗啊！得唔得意啊？哦、oh.。